entertainment. What in the world does it mean that I do something in my leisure time to have fun, to have entertainment? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Court of entertainment, making the most of every opportunity. Making the most of every opportunity. Good thing to talk about in light of the fact that Thanksgiving break, long break, 10 days, right? Some of you, two weeks for some of you. It's coming. I think it's very good thing to talk about. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20. It says, be, caref be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil therefore do not be foolish but understand what the lord's will is do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery instead be filled with the holy spirit be filled with the spirit Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me ask you some questions. What do you do for leisure? What do you do for entertainment? For fun? If you had the whole afternoon off or whole week off and you don't have to do anything, you really have choice. I know that you can't think of that the last time you had that time. But what would you do for your leisure, for your pleasure, for your entertainment if you had the whole afternoon off or whole week off? This might be some of the things that you might say as I ask a lot of people these questions. Some of you might play or watch sports. Why that as opposed to something else? I mean, you could do anything in the world, but you would play sports or watch sports. Play sports or watch. Yeah, watch sports. Why? Why is there preference? There's a reason, I think. Some of you would go shopping. I have no idea why in the world you would do that. If you had a whole afternoon off, you go shopping. I don't know why, but I can run around for three hours, but when I start to walk on the shopping mall, I get dizzy, I get tired in five minutes. I don't know what it is. Some of you would hang out with friends or with people if you had time. You would call them or email them or phone them. Somehow you spend time with people. Some of you would play computer or video games whole week. Some of you would read. I know some of you can't believe some people would do that. But some people actually do. When they have time, they would read. Some people would sleep. Should we make people raise hands? Some of you would search the web and surf the web if you had time. And read, learn, improve yourself, grow. Some of you would take a walk. Bicycle, mountain bicycle riding, swimming by yourself. I have no idea why you would want to do that, but you like that. Some of you would exercise. These, uh, these days I've been going to Wimpy to play basketball on Mondays and I see a lot of the guys passing by. Very fascinating walk out like this some of you would eat and eat and eat when you have time some of you would watch TV or TV watches you some of you would actually clean I know some people can't understand that but some people would actually if they have time they would clean that would give them sense of pleasure just like some of you would have sense of pleasure in making a basketball or going on a shopping, some people have pleasure in cleaning. You can come to my house anytime. <laughs> we'll let you lose. 
Some of you would actually study. There are some people would, who would actually do cross stitches. I cannot understand this one. This one I cannot understand. But some people actually have sense of pleasure doing it. Makes me tired trying to put one thing in the hole. That's it for me. Five minutes shopping, one hole, that's it for me. <laughs> some people would actually cook. You should marry somebody who, should, who likes to eat for leisure, then you get very happy marriage. <laughs> some people would actually help other people, trying to find some people would, you would help. Some people would work, actually work. Really interesting. For me, these are some of my, some of the things that I would do if I had time. I would either play basketball, watch TV, hang out with my family, not in that chronological order, but. <laughs> or I would read and prepare for, you know, next semester or something like that, what to preach and all these things, study and think, think about hard motives, and, you know chapters I would write and all these things. I would think about doing that. I'm not including, you know, times I would read Bible and pray. Those things will be there, but I'm talking about even without those times. So why is there a preference? Think about that. Why in the world is there a preference? Why do you like to do certain things? Why do you don't like to do certain things? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, why? Isn't that the weirdest thing? that some people would actually like to cross-stitch. It is just really interesting. It's because people want, desires different things. What they want is different. So I'll talk about three categories of things to talk about this entertainment. First is the biblical basis of entertainment, biblical basis. So let's translate this into the biblical language. Can we translate it? Yes. Well, first of all, we'll talk about the biblical basis of entertainment. Secondly, we'll talk about what may be wrong with my entertainment. What may be wrong? So you can check your entertainment with these three things that I'll talk about. What may be wrong with my entertainment? Thirdly, how can we redeem? How can we redeem them? How can we make it right if it's wrong? So let's talk about, first of all, biblical basis of entertainment. Let's translate it into biblical language. What does it mean that I do something during leisure? Is, is there a legitimacy of leisure? Is there, is, can I actually rest and do something? Can I actually be entertained? Is it okay? Why, or why do we desire it so much? I think we can find the biblical basis from book of Genesis, pre-fall, before we sinned, when we had the pure heart, okay? And then we can talk about after when we sinned. It's a little bit about what we talked about last Sunday, if you were there, when I talked about biblical view of Sabbath and uh, Sunday, Lord's Day, and all these things, similar to that, but we, we can go a little bit deeper. So before the fall, before our hearts were, impure. Now we are sinners before God. And uh, even though if you're a Christian, now we have become Christians. Now our hearts are being purified. But another side of that is we're still sinners. So it still applies. Uh, before the fall, before we sinned before God, God made us to work six days and then one day of rest. Six days we work, one day of rest. So when our hearts were pure, it was six days of fantastic joy of serving. Working was enjoyable. If God made, told you to study, you would have loved to study. Wow, I can study for the glory of God. And you would memorize for the glory of God. You would do all this. You would cross stitch for the glory of God. You would go on a shopping for the glory of God. Your hearts were pure. You would have loved to serve God in anything you do. Whether you eat or drink, you were doing it for the glory of God for six days of fantastic joy of serving the Lord. And then one day, God made you physical being, so you had to rest. But while you're resting, 
you're not resting in your serving of the Lord. Now you're resting. As you're resting, you fellowship with the Lord and you're strengthened with the Lord. And God says six days he worked as well. And then seventh day he rested because of that. Because God did that, we are to do it. But as we know that God worked for six days and seventh day he rested doesn't mean he, it was inactivity for him. He still sustained the universe. He still held the stars in his place. But when he rested, he rested from creation work so that he can have fellowship with us. So God stops everything to have fellowship with us. So six days we work hard and seventh day we rest physically but have fellowship with the Lord to be refueled and strengthened and rejuvenated physically and to serve the Lord again for next six days. So both rest and the work was joy because of our pure heart to love God. And we picture the image of God joyfully serving and joyfully resting as we rule, rule uh, as workers in this world. Now that's great, fantastic. Working and resting was bo both fun. Great. Joy. They were actually entertainment. Now post fall, after we sinned, Bible says cursed is the ground, so everything we do working becomes hard. It doesn't, it doesn't comply. Work, ground doesn't comply. It produces bad fruit. Before it was what you do, what you do, it produces fruit. But now it produces thorns and thistles. Cursed is the ground, but not only that, our hearts became sinful. So what happens when our hearts become sinful? Now we want to be God. Now, mean, which means now we want to be served. We don't want to serve anymore. Serving is not joy anymore. Serving is misery. Serving is misery because now we want to be served. So goal of all of our work became self-service. And the goal of rest is to release the frustration in unfulfillment of work so we find something else to fulfill ourselves, to serve ourselves. So six days we work to serve ourselves, to be powerful, popular, loved, and perfect. And then one day we release our frustration by finding something that gives us sense of being powerful, popular, being loved, and being perfect. Okay? Which means we always have one desire, one main desire that drives everything we do so that we will be God, so that we will, be, we will feel the sense of being served. Okay? So everything we do is to fulfill that desire, whether we are working, whether we are resting. So if you want to know more about that, please look at the sermon called Biblical Basis of Heart Motive, Biblical Basis of Heart Motive, which I preached during summertime, I think maybe July this past summer. You have to read that. And it goes deep into it and you will find yourself in there. And if you can't figure it out, please meet one of the pastors. They're getting good at figuring this out. And we're continuously training them. So. Uh, mainly, there will be four things that will drive everything we do. Respect. Reason why we want respect is if you want to be God, you would want to be respected so that you can be worshipped. So when you want respect, when you get angry and upset, when you're not getting respected, you want respect. Okay? Or at least you don't want to be disrespected. It gets a lot more complicated than that. I'm just breezing by. Or some of you have desire to be liked. You want one heart at a time. You want them to like you. You want them to have positive impression of you. That's why you can't say no to people. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? Why? Because just like God's name has to spread, you want your name to be spread. Some of you want to be loved, at least by few people, or at least accepted by everyone. But those few, you have few chosen ones that you want to be loved by. How you care for them is different than any you care for anyone else because you want to be loved by them. Why? Because you want to be like God. Just like you want to, God is to be loved with all their heart, all his all of our heart, mind, soul, strength. What happens is that uh, you want those few people to love you with all of their heart, mind, soul, strength, and you that's why you get jealous of them if they give attention or time or affection to other people. Some of you are per perfectionists. You want to be perfect, just like God is to be perfect. God's standard has to be perfect. What you do is you want to be perfect, so you either continuously improve yourselves to be perfect, or you want everything you do to be perfect. 
That's why you're critical at other people because not only do you want to be perfect, you want everyone else to be live according to your standard. You have your own standard, so you're trying to reach that standard and you want everyone else to live according to that standard. Why? Because just like God's rule has to be obeyed, you want your rule to be obeyed, your standard to be obeyed by everyone else. Okay? So we all want to be God like that and those desires drive everything we do. Why? Because we want to be God and we want to be served. So during the leisure time, not only are you working to get those things, not only every minute by minute, second by second, you are working to get those things, even in your rest, when you want to rest, when you want to be entertained, when you want to rest from these things, you would find something to satisfy yourself in those things, whether you feel respected by those things or through those things or being liked by th through those things, being loved by those things or being perfect. By through those, th through those things, you would find those things to fulfill yourself for your entertainment. Why? Because you don't want to serve anymore, you want to be served. You don't want to serve God anymore, you want to be God. So, if you're a Christian, two desires in your heart. Evil heart says, we will find something that will help us to fulfill our selfish desires to be exalted. Or you have biblical heart that says, Biblical heart says, during the rest, we must be physically rested, but also spiritually refueled and strength to serve the Lord. So while I'm resting, I'm not going to find entertainment that will fulfill my evil desire to feel worshipped and to be magnified. But I'm going to find time or things that will help me to be refueled, re-strengthened and rejuvenated. The, the difference between recreation, recreation that fulfills my heart, my heart motive, recreation, that makes me happy versus recreation that makes that helps me to grow and to be more like Jesus so you have to check your entertainment does it gives me recreation I, I just mindlessly do things if you I tell you right now if you're mindlessly doing things it's probably feeding your heart motive it's feeding your selfish desire evil desire that affects everything you do is it a recreation or is it recreation activity that helps you to grow? That helps you to use things so that you can make the most of every opportunity in your life. Okay. That's the biblical basis of entertainment. Biblical basis of leisure. Meaning there's not a single moment that we do things mindlessly. Every moment of our lives, we are looking for something that will fulfill our heart desires. That's why you feel lonely, empty, unhappy, uh, frustrated. All these emotions indicate you are not getting what you love. You're not getting what you desire. So when you're lonely, empty, it, you usually do these things. You have these habitual things you do. And they feed your heart. So that you feel the sense of exaltation, satisfaction, fulfillment. So that you would be God. So biblical basis of entertainment. So we usually find, because we want that all the time, we usually would find something that would help us to exalt ourselves. There is not a single moment that you do not want this. So there is no neutral moment in our hearts. It's not, the necess it's not necessarily outside the world, things that are outside the world that's bad, but what you want is bad. Because we are spiritual beings. What we love, what we desire. Is not God or not love of people, but love of ourselves and exaltation of ourselves. That's what we find during the times of entertainment. So let's go to the second thing. What may be wrong with my entertainment? What may be wrong with my entertainment? I will uh, ask you to check three things, and then I'll give practical suggestion later, but three things. Desires, check your desires, check your mind, and check your time usage. Three things, My, uh, desire, mind, time usage. Let me talk about this. Let, we'll expand on it. First of all, desire, heart. What I am doing, you see, whatever we do, what I'm doing may be influencing what I love. 
Whatever I do, it can influence what I love. If I read the Bible in a right way, right, with right motive, it can help me to love God. Or whatever I do, it affects my desire. I love myself more, or it influences my behavior, because we're spiritual beings. Whatever I do will influence our desires and hearts. Uh, Augustine, in his book, one of, the, one of the best books I've ever read, Augustine's book called Confession. And this is what he says. And he's talking about, uh, he's talking about heart of entertainment there. He, he gave me one of the first insights about entertainment as I was reading his book. Basically, at that time, he didn't have computer games, he didn't have video games, he didn't have TV, movies, but they had the theater. So what he, what he talks about is he's watching these plays, and there is the illegitimate love, like two unmarried people are having relationship, and he's saying that's an illegitimate relationship. Now he's looking at that and he says this. He says when he enjoys that illegitimate relationship, it's because he has the same passion as those people who are committing sin in the act of play. He says that. He says reason why he's enjoying that, what he's watching in a theater, logically speaking, biblically speaking, it may be an illegitimate thing if they're having a sexual relationship outside of marriage that's sin before God, sin according to the Bible. And when I enjoy that, watching that is because of the similar passion that I have in my heart. That is so perceptive. That gives light of so many things we, we do in our lives, if you think about it. Why do I enjoy movies? Because you, you have similar passion. Whether it's, if you like violent movies, why, why do you think, like you like violent movies, you have similar passion. You might not, you may not kill people, but that kind of sense of satisfaction, power, or whatever it desires that you're being satisfied, you enjoy this, you have the same passion. And he says this, very, very perceptive, he says this. Even today, I'm not unmoved by pity. This is what he says. But at that time, at the theater, I share the joy of lovers when they wickedly found delight in each other. So in that illegitimate relationship, at that time probably was a lot cleaner than what we enjoy on TV shows and movies, R-rated movies or things like that. But at that time, at the theater, I share the joy of lovers when they wickedly found delight in each other. Even though their actions in the spectacle on the stage were imagery, it's just, it's not real, it's just the imagery. When moreover they lost each other, they break off, then I share their sadness by feeling a compassion. Nevertheless, in both pleasure, uh, nevertheless, in both, there was pleasure. This is what he's saying. He's saying, when they are having a legitimate relationship, oh, I was happy, just like they would be happy. And then when they broke off, they were sad. I was so sad in both Julian said, he said he felt pleasure. What he's saying is, he had the same illegitimate joy that they had, which proves that he had same illegitimate joy. Okay? And he continues, today, now after he became Christian, he's different. His desire is different. This is really perceptive. This is what he says, today I have more pity for a person who rejoices in wickedness meaning two people having illegitimate relationship in there. I used to enjoy that, but now I have pity for them. Today I have more pity for a person who rejoices in wickedness than for a person who has the feeling of having suffered hard knocks by being deprived of a pernicious pleasure or having lost a source of miserable felicity. I had to read like 10 times to understand what that means. <laughs> Basically what it means is this. Now when they're having relationship, illegitimate relationship, now he has pity. More than when they break off. Before when they break off, he had pity. But now he has more pity when they are having a relationship. Why? Because he's, he has compassion for people who are having sins. He realizes that sin. Now he doesn't have the same desire. Even though it hurts them when they break off, it is better for them to do that because they're not sinning. Now he has more joy seeing them broken off than having illegitimate relationship. Because now he's discerning in his mind what is right and what is, what is wrong. Now he has pity for wicked love. Because now he has true Christian love. Now he wants them to have fantastic relationship in the Lord. 
But he goes on to say, even though we have mixed motive, he says, well, you, Lord God, lover of souls, show a compassion far purer and freer of mixed motive than ours, for no suffering injures you, and who is sufficient for these things. It has, what, what he just said has implications of so many things in our lives. Just fantastic. Now, when you watch things on TV or movies or read books, why do you enjoy them? Because you have same pleasure. You sympathize with something. If you like uh, the movie, uh, The Gladiator, <laughs> why do you like that? Maybe you like to be hero like him. Maybe you like to be loved by one of the, one of the guys. Uh, if you don't like it, maybe you really don't like that king guy who, uh, you know, who uh, really wanted to be loved but did not, did not get love. So you don't know why you did not enjoy it, but you just didn't enjoy it because you might be a love me person. Uh, you might enjoy it because of the vicious uh, uh, violence, which might be the same desire that you have. When you enjoy something, it's because of a similar desire that you have. When you enjoy the video game of killing other people and stuff like that, why do you enjoy it? Why do you like it? You may not actually do it, but you may have the same desire. You might be thinking of somebody's face as the enemy and stuff like that. Okay. When you see a sexual scene, why do you like it? When you see food in the movies, why do you get hungry? Well, me, I get, I get that all the time. I, when I see Chinese food box and chopsticks in a movie, I don't know what it is. I want to go right there. Okay? We need to think about that. Okay? These things, as you keep watching or doing or participating, it feeds your heart. There was an Eskimo who brought two dogs to the town all the time two black dog and a white dog and what he would do is get you know they would he would make them fight and people would bet on money and who would win and he would say this black dog is going to win then that day black dog wins and he wins all the money and another day he comes he says white dog is going to win then he that day that white dog is going to win and he gets all the money and people realized that he was always right and he wins money all the time. So he, somebody asked him, how do you know that which dog is going to win that day all the time? He goes, well, when I come, if I'm going to guess black dog is going to win, I would fast. I would not give food to the white dog and just keep on feeding the black dog so black dog would be strong and he would always win and vice versa. My point is this, you keep on feeding your evil motive, it's going to get stronger, it's going to influence your thoughts and heart desire and life and how you behave and how you act. If you keep feeding right motive with the right things, it's going to help you to grow spiritually and be strengthened and help you to overcome temptations and difficulties in your life. Which dog are you feeding in your heart? What you do in your leisure affects your heart, your love, your behavior, your emotion. It helps you to whether become Christ-like or not Christ-like. So desire, first thing. What may be wrong with my entertainment? Second thing is mind. What's wrong? What, something may be something wrong in terms of our mind. In your entertainment, whether it might be not really working in your mind or feeding the wrong thoughts, right? Either way, you could be doing something wrong according to your mind in your uh, leisure time. This article called Crack in the Box, written by Pete Hamill, gives incredible insight about television and uh, drug addiction, correlation between television and drug addiction. TV generation, basically the premise of his statement is TV generation can easily go into drug addiction. <laughs> Uh, this is really interesting. This is what it says. Both of them, similarity between both is you have unearned joy, unearned fun. So there is abrupt shift in mood. Like when you watch TV, you don't really earn it. You just sit there and do nothing. You're very passive. But TV does all these things, and as you watch, you can have fun, you can laugh, you can have excitement, you can be happy, you can be joyful, you can cry. While you're not active in your mind, you are, you're passive in your mind, TV does everything for you. 
So that kind of generation cannot really do anything in his mind. So when he grows up, he desires that sense, but he doesn't know how to work with his mind. So what, what happens? Easily can go into drug. Because your mind is not active. Your mind is, you're so lazy in your mind. You can still develop it. You have potential to develop your mind, be active. But you desire that unearned sensation and happiness and joys and emotion shift and feeding of your heart motive. Reading is different. That article says reading is different. Reading is, your mind is active in reading. Okay? Your mind is, as you're reading, here's code that are written on a paper. And what, when you read, you're interpreting the code. You understand that and you picture, you create the scenes. You, so your mind is very active as you uh, interpret the code and make, makes you read, makes you picture things. Okay? And your mind becomes active. TV, video games, these kind of things will make your mind passive. So this TV generation can easily go into drug generation because it, it does exactly the same thing. He goes on to say things like this, the drug plagues also coincides with the unspoken assumption of most television shows. Life should be easy. The most complicated events are summarized on TV news in a minute or less. Cops confirm murder, chase the criminals, and bring them to justice, usually violently, within an hour. I mean, how lazy your mind becomes. How, ma how many times in reality does that happen? It takes few weeks or few months to capture a thief. It takes work. But here, in one hour, that happens, and your emotions is shifted within an hour. In the commercials, you drink the right beer, and you get the girl. Easy. So why should real life be a grind? Why should any American have to spend years mastering a skill or a craft or work eight hours a day at an unpleasant job or endure the compromises and, and crisis of a marriage? Nobody works on television except cops, doctors, and lawyers. <laughs> love stories on televisions are uh, about falling in love or breaking up. The long, steady growth of a marriage uh, it is essential, its essential dailiness is seldom explored except as comedy. Life on television is almost always simple. Good guys and bad, nice girls and whores, smart guys and dumb. And if life in the real world isn't that simple, well, hey man, have some dope. Man, be happy and feel good. I'm just reading, I'm not making up this night. <laughs> The doper always whines about how he feels. Drugs are used to enhance his feelings, like animals. Think about that, like animals. You don't want to think and work. You just want your senses and feelings shifted. Uh, and in this, the doper is very American. No other people on earth spend so much time talking about their feelings. Hundreds of thousands go to shrinks. They buy self-help books by millions. They pour out intimate confessions to virtual strangers in bars or discos. Our political campaigns are about emotional issues now, stated in the simplicity of adolescence, on and on. Our mind may not have to work to feed our heart motive in all these things. So my question to you is, what is a reality? What is reality as you are engaged in these things and your entertainment? What is reality? When you're engaged in TV, when you're engaged in video games, or even when you're engaged in some of the activities that may give you rest, but really not helpful in your life, what is a reality? How does that help you to build your character? Is it recreation or is it recreation activities? Be careful, especially if you're involved in things that really moves your sensation and gives you joy and gives you uh, happiness, gives you sensation. Be careful. Okay? Those are uh, affecting our spiritual things. So third thing is time. Desire, mind, and time. Time. Uh, I did some research on Pokemon. Why do children go crazy about Pokemon? Because there are some things that will feed everyone's heart motive, heart desires. This morning I talked to one of the church members and studied on StarCraft. Whew, 
I mean, it is a masterpiece game to feed your heart motive. And you know what I mean more than I do. I'm what I'm saying. It's the skills that are involved playing together, sense of dominance, killing. The stories, that's just so fascinating. The stories that, the, that, the, that they have, all kinds of stories that are coming out. It's just so fantastic. When you're so engrossed in there, a lot of times it becomes your reality. Your heart is fed. You have this sense. And re what's wrong with this is it replaces the reality, replaces the good, it replaces the best. Ah, Bible says, make the most of every opportunity. Make the most. You only live, live once. Never ever kill time. Never ever kill time. Use every opportunity to grow. Be alive through the right usage of time. Never kill time. Eternity hangs on it. We all going to be judged according to what we do, even in our entertainment. It does it help me to grow? Does it help my heart to love God and love others? Do not merely enjoy recreation, which kills you, but enjoy recreation, which makes you come alive in Jesus. Worship God, serve God, love others, so that you can become a loving man of God, loving woman of God. Time or rest is given to get closer to the Lord, not temporarily stop to indulge ourselves. Make the most of every opportunity. So thirdly, we talked about biblical basis. Secondly, what may be wrong with our entertainment? We examined it a little bit. Now thirdly, so how can I redeem our recreation to recreate? How can we redeem our recreation to recreation? Okay. Uh, I would suggest three things. First, is work on your mind and heart. Work on your mind and heart. Secondly, evaluate your entertainments. Thirdly, use your entertainments to grow and to love. Use your entertainments to grow and to love. I'll talk about it a little bit, be more practical. First is work on your mind and heart. Work on your mind and heart. How can we do that? Two verses I would suggest. One is Ephesians 5, 18 in this text. Ephesians 5, 18. It says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Do not get drunk on wine. Okay? Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. My interpretation is, don't do things to stimulate your evil desire. What does wine do? Even though it's a physical thing, it numbs your senses so that you can be free to stimulate it stimulates your evil desire. You can be free to express your evil desire. So don't do things to stimulate your evil desires, which you already have in your heart. Wine doesn't plant the evil desire in your heart. It stimulates your evil desire so that you can express it freely. Why do people become wild after uh, they drink or get depressed after they drink? Because it's stimulating their evil desires. So when, the, when they don't get it, they express it or they get depressed for not getting it. Okay? So it's saying, don't do this thing. Do things to stimulate your evil desire, whether it's mindless thing to give you sensation or shift of emotion, or wine or drug. If probably the psalm writer is writing, it probably, he probably would not say wine, do not get drunk on wine. He probably says to our generation, don't get into drug, which leads to debauchery, okay? it's, which stimulates and it helps you to express your evil desire. For they only, these things only feed and stimulate your evil desire. But it says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not get drunk on one which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean by filled with the Holy Spirit? Same context, Paul says in Colossians, same context in Colossians 3, instead of be filled with the Holy Spirit, it says, richly dwell in the Word of God. Exactly same context, exact same phrase, except one phrase is different. It says, instead of being filled with the Holy Spirit, it says, 
richly dwell in the Word of God. That's how we are filled with the Holy Spirit. As we dwell in the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, plant the Word of God in your heart. Let the Word of God, the Word of Christ, richly, richly, abundantly dwell in you. So put these things in your mind. Be mindful with a word which feeds and stimulates good desires. Desires and heart, desires of the heart and mind. Word of God goes in so this Holy Spirit will use them to richly help us to give wisdom in our lives and stimulate our desire to live for the Lord, love others, love God. Okay? Spend time in those things. Another verse that will help us to work on our mind and heart is 1 Peter 4, 7. I'll just read it to you. 1 Peter 4, 7. Very helpful verse. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Be clear-minded and be self-controlled so that you can pray. Be clear-minded and be self-controlled so that you can pray. What does it mean? Be clear-minded means be sober. Do not be intoxicated. With what? With worldliness. Okay? Do not be intoxicated with things of this world. And be self-controlled, meaning it talks about desires of our heart. Meaning, if we continue to stimulate our desires with our entertainments, with wrong things, what happens? Those are the things that we think about. Like when you close your eyes to pray, things will come down and you can see those robots moving and you can see those TV shows, whatever, or you can see the... Uh, holes for the cross stitch, you, whatever it is you're thinking about, those things will come to your mind. Okay? You are intoxicated with those things. Intoxicated with desires that stimulate you, things in your mind. Do not be, do not think about those things. Be sober. Do not be intoxicated. And it says be self-controlled. It talks about heart desire. It says so that you can pray. So con continue to clear your minds and cleanse your heart with, your, with the Word of God. Be more pure and purified. Then what happens? You can pray. And when you do that Word of God, Holy Spirit uses, and you can pray, you can receive the strength of God, you are working in your mind and heart to love God and serve God. And in that process, you are becoming a man of God whom He desires you to be. You can be potent and effective in the kingdom of God. So work on your mind and heart with those two verses. Ephesians 5.18, 1 Peter 4.7. Prayer and the Word. Okay? Second suggestion is let's be a little more practical. Evaluate your entertainment. Evaluate your entertainment. So some questions to help you to evaluate your entertainment. Now, are you doing it too much? Whatever you're doing, whatever you do in your leisure time, are you doing it too much? If you're even, you want, you like to think by yourself, be alone by yourself, are you doing it too much? If you're uh, doing all kinds of things, are you doing it with sports? Are you doing it too much? Exercise, you do for two, three, four, five, six hours a day. I know some people do that. Some people have confessed me. They do that. It's just unbelievable. Are you doing too much? And as you, as you pray, do these things appear? That's what you think about. Balls start to bounce in your head. Are you doing it too much? Is it... Uh, hindering your spiritual life. Then Bible says, be clear-minded. Do not be intoxicated with those things. Be self-controlled. Stop doing those things so that you can pray, it says. Is it too much? Are you doing it too much? Whatever you're doing for leisure. Okay. How about overall, another question is, overall effect in your life. Overall effect in your heart and mind. What you think about stimulation of your desire. You can check yourself. Is it affecting me? How does it affect me overall? Does it help me? Am I making the most of every opportunity or am I wasting time? Overall effect. Another question is addiction. Addiction. You can know, you can know their addiction because if it's at cost of making the most of every opportunity, you cannot help but to do it. Loving God and loving other people and biblical things and, or studies or uh, s small groups or prayer life or reading of the scripture. Uh, it's, is it a cost of making the most of every opportunity in your addiction of it? Let me ask you another question. Does it make me behave and act like Christless, Christless person? Does it make me behave and act like Christless person? Does it help me to act or behave like Christians, or am I when I'm involved in this, 
Sometimes I do not act like a Christian, whether you're playing sports or going, on a sh- going, on, going to a shopping, buying clothes, different kinds of things, thinking by yourself, whatever it is you're doing. Are you acting like a Christian? Or does it make, get you a little too angry? Then you might be getting too much involved in it, and what you're doing is you're, heart, you're seeking for your heart motive to be met. Because wherever you are, you ought to be Christian. Whatever you're doing, you ought to be Christian. Whatever you're doing, you should check with the scripture. Does it help me to behave in a certain way? As I said before, when I went to the Michigan football, Illinois Michigan f- football game, oh my. The exp- I would never bring my kids to football games. Some of how some of the people react. It might, it might be just recreation, just watching football, and I enjoy watching football. Okay? But how they're behaving is not the way my children, I want my children to grow up to be. Name of God used many times, not in prayer, but curse. Unbelievable. And how they treat Michigan fans was pretty embarrassing. And uh, I was talking to the guy who's, uh, uh, you know, who was showing me about StarCraft, how, how they trash talk while they're playing with other people. It's just unbelievable. Some of the things that he, he would say, he, he said that he's not going to tell me what the content of the trash talking. It's just unbelievable. Does it make you act like Christian, behave like Christian when you play sports or doing kind of, you know, recreation activity? Okay. And let me ask you this question. Can I use it to grow and minister? Can I use it to grow and minister? Which helps you to go on to the next point. Use your entertainments to grow and love. Use your entertainments to grow and love. What am I saying? Which means, listen to me carefully, this will be very encouraging. Because <laughs> it up to now, it may have sounded like don't ever do anything except read the Bible and pray. Now, that's not what I'm suggesting. Otherwise, I, can, I don't even do that. <laughs> now, this is what I'm suggesting. You can choose your entertainments that you enjoy. You can choose your entertainments that you enjoy. But only if you can use them to grow and love God and people. Okay? You can use entertainments you, you enjoy. But only if you can really use them to grow and love. You can have fun, which means when you have fun, humanly means it's feeding your evil heart motive. You can have fun, but also because you, your heart is so in it, you can redeem those things as you change your heart. You can redeem those things that you can, you're having fun with to minister, to love other people, and even grow through that process. Redeem those things. That's exactly what happens when, in term, what, I, what is a gift? Think about it like this. A gift means what I'm good at. Why am I good at that? Because it, it was feeding my heart motive all my life. It's like when you're, if you're good in singing, wah, singing, you sang, and then it, everybody praised you, and you wanted to receive people's praise. Now, you can say that's your gift, or you can say you use that to feed your heart motive all the time. Now, what would God do when you sing well? God's, God's not going to, okay, I'm going to pluck this guy's voice out, or this girl's voice out, so that uh, I can use him some other ways, because he used it to glorify himself. No, he doesn't do that. He will say, I will continue to use his or her singing, but now I'm going to change his or her heart, so that his desire will be to love me and serve me through that singing, what is he doing? He's redeeming that gift, redeeming that singing ability for his glory by changing the heart. That's exactly what he's doing in everything we do. Whether we eat or drink, do it all for the glory of God. How? As he changes our heart. That's exactly the same principle. Even though when we enjoy and have fun, and our heart will be in it. You can choose those things, but can I use those things? If I redeem my heart, can I still use those things to love God and serve others? I'll give you some example. So you can choose some fun things like myself. I play basketball. If I play basketball, I'll tell you right now, it feeds my evil motive because I'm not that bad. <laughs> Okay, so, it, it, you know, at least I can make a layup. At least the ball goes through the hoop sometimes when I throw it. So, I feel good. 
right? Sure, it feeds my evil motive. Now, does it mean I'm never going to play basketball? No, I'm still going to play basketball, but this time I'm going to continuously change my heart. Okay? I'm going to really pray for the time, basketball time, so that I'll use it to minister and love God in this sense. You know, Tuesdays I would play basketball with non-Christians for witnessing purpose. Uh, Mondays or Saturdays, or whenever I can play, I would use it to have fellowship with our church guys. And when I meet younger guys, younger guys usually I can't meet. I can only meet like, you know, hundred, some hundred, couple hundred people a year. So what, what do I do with five, six hundred of you? I, I got to meet any other time. And when I meet some freshman and sophomore during while I'm playing basketball, they feel really easy. And also when they play, when they see me basketball, they respect me a little bit more and then they listen to the Word of God a little bit better. So I'll use it for witnessing and fellowship, get to know the younger people, also witness to non-Christians. Uh, some of you are wondering, Pastor May, why don't you play in basketball tournaments anymore? Because even though I enjoy and I can meet a lot of non-Christians during those times, it's still eight hours during the weekend, crunch time. Even though I prepare everything, still my heart will be divided just a little bit. So I said, okay, I'm going to give it up. But I'm going to use other times to fellowship with other people. I'm not going to use eight hours during the weekend to, uh, you know, even though I can minister during those times, I don't, weighing out, I don't think it might be worth it. Maybe God wants me to retire, so I still didn't hold a press conference and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm retired. Okay? Also, I did, in, in terms of basketball, even though I would play and use those times to fellowship, have fellowship with other people, get to know other people, now I'm not going to play on Sunday. Uh, if you play on Sunday, I'm not saying it, it is sin, but for me, I decided I'm going to make Sunday special for the Lord, and I'm not going to play basketball on Sunday, and then I'm going to spend time with my family. That's, that's the decision I made. Uh, now, do I, do I love playing basketball? Yes. Does it feed my evil motive? Yes. But as I'm working on my heart, I can, uh, by God's grace, redeem it so that I can enjoy but have fellowship and minister through those things. Uh, am I for vacation? I'm not for vacation in terms of going away in, in activity. But if I'm going on a vacation, I would go with my family and spend time deeper with my kids and my family. So even though I have fun, yes. Does it feed my evil motive? Yes. But I'm redeeming it. Lord is redeeming it so that I can minister to my family. When I hang out with kids, does it feed my evil motive? Yes, they respect me. I say one thing, they would do it. I'm the sovereign king to them. Does it feed my evil motive? Do I enjoy being with them? Yes. But during that time, I would minister to them. I would spend time with them. I would make them read. And this is really interesting. When they read, when we go to the bookstores, I'm studying uh, and preparing sermons, they would read books. When I watch, carefully watch them, what kind of books they choose, they would choose books that will feed their evil motive. I see that, I go... What a wicked kids, just like their daddy. Uh, just like, you know. And they choose and they will read, but I would use those times and redeem it. I will help them to read and learn, grow, interpret the codes so that they can picture things. I think the mistake I made was I took my kids to the StarCraft showing this morning, and Josh, Joshua, he remembers everything. He says, now I'm playing in my mind. He, he, because he cannot play computer games at home, what he does is he hears it from his friends, and then what he does is he, he says, he imagines and play in his mind. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. When I watch TV, I would watch TV as much as I can to get to know the world and pray for the world. When I read and prepare for the knowledge, okay, am I preparing so that my heart evil, evil motive can be fed? Yes. I'm gonna, I don't want to look stupid to people, but of course I would use those times to prepare. You know how long I took to prepare this message? But I would use those times to prepare messages so that people can grow and be fed, be sanctified for the glory of God. My point is let God redeem your recreation to recreate you. While you can have fun, Grow in love. Remember, spiritual battle never stops. Never stops. 
Okay? Don't choose entertainments that, that you cannot use to grow and to love others. Thanksgiving break is coming. Plan your Thanksgiving 10 days. Plan it. Okay? Plan it. And use it well. While you have fun, be recreated for the glory of God. All God's people said. Amen? Let's pray. Because biblical recrea recreation time is really for recreation time. Even use those things, those times to grow. You can have fun even while you have fun. Okay? You can use it to glorify God and get closer to the Lord. Jesus in his rest, he's sitting at the well, tired. He needed drink, he needed rest. Nobody was there, disciples went away, he was by himself. What does he do? He uses his recreation time to recreate a woman who came. And her life is never the same again. He uses his rest. He uses his recreation time to recreate a soul. Mm. May his followers imitate the master. Let's pray in our hearts. You need to do some evaluation. What do you do in your entertainment? Too much of it, overall effect of it, addiction to it. Okay. Does it make me behave and act like Christ less person? Or, and do I, can I use those things to grow and minister? You might be able to keep some certain things and redeem it. There's some things you just have to throw out. You might be able to salvage some things that you really enjoy but you might have to throw out some things. You make your choice before the Lord. Think, evaluate, maybe talk to some other people. Talk to some older people, it might be helpful. You, you have to do some, you, you just have to do some uh, evaluations because it really helps you or really hinders your spiritual growth. It really either helps you or can really hinder your spiritual growth. A lot of times your spiritual life depends on your recreation. It really does. So evaluate those things. You might be able to keep some things, but redeem it by changing of your heart and purpose of why you're being involved in it. Okay. Or some things, you, I don't think you can salvage. You just have to throw it away. Some things you just have to stop. It's you and God with some help of others. But make the most of every opportunity. For we are created to grow and serve. We have a world to conquer, not sit by ourselves and feel that little fun, little sensation to feel exalted. You are much more than that. You're much more than animals. You're much more than idolaters. You are created to be children of God shine like the stars of the universe. You are the royal priesthood. Jesus, is, will, Jesus said he'll be with you always to the very end of age. We need to go in one heart at a time, love and conquer. We, will, we should move the mountains, walk on water, raise the dead for the glory of God. Come on, guys. We are created to be much more than self-indulging idolaters. We are created to be children of God, to conquer the world for the glory of God. So, let's check our entertainments, leisure. Let's check our, what we thought of as neutral times and evaluate it before the Lord. Let's pray for a few minutes and learn to think right now. Let's pray for a few minutes. If you're done with prayer, let's cleanse our minds and hearts through these songs and pray through these songs together. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. O oh Spirit, come make us humble. We 
Augustine that said one of his uh, one of the lines in confessions is that sometimes he repents for too much enjoyment of even church music that's what he said what is he saying he's enjoying the aesthetic beauty of the music too much and forgetting to worship God meaning we can sing all these things for wrong motive, wrong reason. Not to worship God, but to listen to our voices. We can do godly things. If we have a wrong motive, we can sin even in those things. So redeem our worship, redeem our entertainment, same thing. It all depends on our heart. Do we love God? Do we worship Him? Do we serve Him? Redeem, ev redeem everything you do, whether you eat or drink. Do it all for the glory of God. It really depends on your heart. Do you love God? Let's pray to the Lord so that we will not have too much enjoyment of even anything for ourselves. We can eat uh, for ourselves, but we can eat for the glory of God. Let's pray to the Lord for feelings that Lord will purify our hearts. He will make us His people. Let's pray to the Lord right now. Your desires will change so that your behavior, your emotion, what you love will change. It takes time, guys. I know some of you will, have, some of you will struggle to quit some of those computer games. and Some, some of you will quit struggling. Uh, uh, some of you will struggle in quitting doing your uh, drug addiction or whatever you're doing. It, it'll take time. Okay? But continue to pray. Lord will cleanse your hearts. And you'll be able to quit some of the things that you need to quit and redeem your recreations to be recreation activities. Pray to the Lord right now for a few minutes. Pray to the Lord sincerely in your heart. Lord will redeem your heart and your behaviors and emotions and desires and enjoyment will change. We believe in the changing of people. We believe in changing of heart. Continue to pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Okay? David prayed for renewing of the heart so that he will not lust after the women anymore. You can say the same thing. You can pray the same thing so that you will not have lustful emotional attachment to the other guys. You will not have emotion, lustful emotional attachment to pornography. You will not have lustful emotional attachment to all kinds of things that you're attached to. But the gospel of Jesus Christ says when you pray, the Spirit of God will renew your hearts will recreate you for his kingdom let's pray to the lord that's the hope of the gospel pray to the lord saints of god we are not in hopelessness lord will change and he can redeem your heart and redeem your emotion redeem your habits and recreations and desires and everything you do he can help you let's pray to the lord a few minutes in hope because of our lord jesus christ pray to the lord pray to god who is who is sovereign who has all the spiritual blessings in christ who has power to change our hearts and change our behaviors and change our lives. It may be slow, it may be quick for some of you. Some of you might be able to leave your addiction right now if the Spirit of God works. But many of you, it'll take time. The okay? Lord wants you to depend on Him. Even in your dependency, even in your failures, He wants you to learn His forgiveness, kindness. Continue to repent. Okay? Never run away. Don't be hopeless. We have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So pray to the Lord for a few minutes. He knows everything. Just go to Him. He, he accepts you. He loves you. He cleanses you. He forgives you. And He will strengthen you. Continue to run to Him. Do not run away from Him. Pray to the Lord for a few minutes, saints of God, in hope, because we have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray to the Lord for a few minutes. with prayer just continue to sing these songs continue to pray if you like okay? don't think about other people just pray let's sing our love song to the Lord Lord change my heart to love you more than myself help me to love you
Jesus says, my father is always working and I'm working too. What is he doing? Sustaining the universe. What is he doing? Every minute by minute, second by second, he's watching over us. He watches over his flock. He will not let your foot slip. He will not slumber. He watches over you every single moment of your life. So many times we want to wander away from his presence to be by ourselves so that we can be king of our realm. He stops everything to have fellowship with us. He stopped, he has forsaken everything to come to this earth, to become one of us, to die in our behalf, 
Why? So that we can have fellowship with Him. So that we can be in God's presence. So, can, so that we can be with Him eternally. We need to continue to pray so that our desire will be the same as of our God's. So there will be men and women after God's own heart who wants to be with us all the time. And may His followers be like their master. Let's go to the cross. Jesus says, remember me. Remember me. May we remember that in our leisure. May we remember that in our Thanksgiving and winter break. May we remember Jesus who died to have eternity with us. Don't forget. You led me to the cross And I saw the face of mercy In that place of love I won't forget the love you show, Savior. Teach me of the cross. I won't forget the love. I won't forget the love you show. Help me to remember you, Lord. Lead me to the cross. You led me to the cross And I saw the face of mercy In that place of love You opened up my eyes To believe your sweet salvation Where I've been so blind Now that I'm My every road leads to the cross, Jesus. Keep me near the cross. Help me not forget. 
I won't forget the love you show, Savior. Teach me of the cross. I won't forget the love. I won't forget the love you show, Jesus. Keep me near the cross. I won't forget the love you show, Savior. Teach me of the cross. I won't forget. I won't forget the love. I won't forget the love you show. Resurrection children. There's an empty tomb. Tells me of your resurrection and my life in you. Stone is rolled away. Stone lies rolled away. Nothing but those rolled away clothes where your body lay. Children of God. And now that I'm living as a risen child. I am a Remember me. I won't forget the love. 